Hello, Prairie View students, staff, families, and guests. We're still reading The Snow Treasure by Marie McSwiggin. We're on chapter 23. Did you guess whose room I was in the other day? If you guessed Mrs. Potter's room, you're correct. I'm in another teacher's classroom today. I hope you can guess whose it is. Chapter 23. So it was all over. They'd been discovered. The Nazis knew what they were doing and had come to stop them. Peter knelt in the snow trembling. The blue eyes under the fringe of the fair hair was familiar. Even in his fright, Peter knew he had seen this private before. He had seen him the very first day they'd passed the Nazi sentries. He had been helping unload the supplies. He was the one who seemed to want to sled riding too. More, he was the soldier who came to the Kindertier for the smorgasbord. Then Peter had another surprise. The brush behind the soldier parted and Uncle Victor sprang out. He grabbed the soldier's arms and pinned them behind him. And before he could make an outcry, he had a gag over his mouth. Behind Uncle Victor came Rolls, the mate. His revolver was pointed at the captain. And when the latter made no effort to free himself, it was lowered. Then the men turned back into the brush towards the Kling Pearson. It had all happened all so fast that none but Peter saw. Not even Helga, a few feet away, knew what took place. She was hard at work on her snowman. Helga, take my team back with yours, Peter asked. I want to see Uncle Victor. Helga wanted to see Uncle Victor too, and to go aboard the Klang. Now that Peter knew where to find it, but Peter was president of the defense club. All of them had to obey him. When he refused to let her come with him, she had to do as he asked. So here's the picture of them catching the German soldier. Peter kneeling down by his sled and um, Uncle Victor and his mate um, catching him. Peter had no idea whether or not his uncle would allow him aboard the boat, but he was going to find out. What was happening on the smack was something no boy of 12 was going to miss if he could help it. So he hurried through the brush to the side of the water. From below the deck came strange sounds. Not to lose any of the excitement, Peter almost fell down the companionway in his haste. Uncle Victor and Rolls had untied the prisoner's arms and had taken the gag from his mouth. Then the captive soldier drew off his round army cap and threw it to the floor and tramped on it. He beat it with his feet up and down. Then he tore the insignia on his collar and tried to rip it off. All the while he was making hideous faces. What is this, this man? Speak. Your mouth is no longer tied, Uncle Victor commanded. Then came a torrent of words, Norwegian and some other tongue Peter did not recognize. I am no German, even if I do wear the uniform. I am a Pole. They took me and made me serve them, and the deceit is theirs, not mine. But what are you doing with the German army of occupation? Uncle Victor asked. I tell you. It is not my fault, it is theirs. I am no more to blame than, than, than that boy here. He pointed to Peter, and now Uncle Victor and Rose saw him too. But Uncle Victor made no move toward Peter. He gave him a glance that seemed to say, It's all right. At your age, I wouldn't have missed it either. I wanted to go to the United States, the pole went on. If you take me on this boat, I'll cook and I'll scrub the decks I will sew the sails in carpentry. I'll stand watch. I'll do anything you ask. Only don't leave me here with those merciless machines, those Germans. What's he talking like that for? Uncle Victor turned to Rose. What makes him think I take a man in German uniform anywhere? How do I know he's a Pole and he hates the Germans? Does he think that I'm a baby to take him on his own word? Then he turned on the pole and spoke severely. Come now, tell me what you know. How long have you been following these children? 
If I follow children, I only do because I'm lonely. It's because I want to be with someone I can take, like and trust. I will not make friends with Germans. They don't even speak to me unless I do and can do them a service. Tears come into his blue eyes. Come now, that is absurd. You have been following these children because you are spying on them. You want to find out what brings them here on their sleds. And then you go and tell the commandants and win a promotion. I know you, your sly German tricks. No, no, I have no sly German tricks. I'm a Pole. I have no love for the Germans. To me, they have done me wrong, put, short of putting me to death. If I follow the children, it's not to do them harm. He spoke convincingly. Peter believed he told the truth. Even Uncle Victor seemed inclined to believe him, for his next question was put in a milder tone. But if you want the children to be with you, why did you make yourself known when you were here last week? I was on the other side of the fjord. I cannot cross over. But what are you doing in Holmes' bar? Oh, sorry, it was Peter. What were you doing in Holmes' barn? Peter asked. For it was you, of course. If one is lonely, even cows can be companions. Uncle Victor turned away. Peter spoke again. He was sorry for the captive, but he believed his story. But with so much at stake, they couldn't afford to take chances. But it was you who were in the Condottieri, the day you posted the notices about going back to school. Why is it you can have so much liberty and the others have to go back to the barracks? They don't have to go back to the barracks. It's by choice. When they found Norwegians were ignoring them, they decided they could stay together entirely. And when the epidemic came, they were frightened. Weren't you frightened too? Not I, because death, it is nothing. I only live that someday I can help my country. Poland is my country. Uncle Victor cleared his throat. If he was going to say something, the Polish boy didn't give him a chance. But won't you take me with you to America? For surely that is where I are going. He looked about the cabin. From the other side of the fjord, I saw the boat in the clever, clever disguise, and I knew you'd be sailing soon for that country. I'll be no trouble if you take me, and when I get there, I've a place to go. I have a married sister in Pittsburgh. But that's utter nonsense, Uncle Victor protested, and his voice was again loud and angry. Even if I didn't take this some sly Nazi trick, how could I land you there? They wouldn't let you in without a passport. That's the end of this chapter. Have a wonderful evening.